Hello everybody and welcome to this general walkthrough of all nine holes of the Southern Pines ready for Bubba's Nine Hole Cup which of course is starting on Thursday. Before we get started please do hit thumbs up on the walkthrough video that would be very kind. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and get the bell button enabled so you can be notified when we go live or upload new content here on the BK Golf Clash channel. As usual we'll be looking at the overviews in turn each hole and I will be putting on the diagrams the arrows with some suggested routes and also some general elevations. Bear in mind these will need to be tweaked depending what tee you're playing from sometimes and also the wind strength and direction. These holes are pretty long so uh, in headwind is going to be very very interesting but my intention on Thursday and also Saturday will be to do expert and master and as always with the nine hole cups my master guides will be completely free to play balls. So I will be streaming Expert and Master Thursday and Saturday, 8 a.m. UK time, that is directly at the start of the tournament, to have a first look at the wins. Okay, let's get started with hole number one. Beginning then with the first hole, which is a par four. We've got two routes here. The usual route is going to be the white arrow on the left, although this is the less aggressive of the two routes in terms of chance for an eagle. Be laying up uh, down the fairway there. We are going to need at least a power two, power three ball here, even from uh, front tee, uh, because the second shot is going to be a wood club. 10% extra on the drive. Go with some top spin and some side spin as well. Get as far down as you can towards that rough, but obviously without risking going into the rough itself because you will have difficulty reaching the green in two if you're in the rough. 10% also on the second shot, that's gonna be a wood club, bouncing to the left-hand side of those three bunkers immediately before the green with some right spin to take it in towards the pin. The black line presents a good opportunity if we do have any tailwind, then it's gonna be power three ball minimum and we're gonna be going full blast directly down there on the right-hand side over the stream. I've put two red crosses there, they are potential bounce points. If we can clear directly over, then that would be the ideal opportunity because there's more fairway to aim at. But we have in the past also played bounce over uh, in that little recess of that bunker there before the stream as well. So you're gonna have to adjust accurately, go with some overpower maybe if you need to, if we don't have a very strong tailwind, but that is the aggressive route and I think that will give you the best chance of an eagle. From that right-hand side on the black arrows, you've got two options for the second shot, which is also going to play 10%. You've got the rough bump with top spin, if you can find a good consistent point to aim at and get the ball guide to the hole. Otherwise, you play beyond the rough with backspin with either long iron or short iron, depending how much distance you've gained from your drive. On to the second now, this is the first of the par threes, and I think one of the easier par threes that we have in the Southern Pines. 10% extra general elevation from all tees is my suggestion. The white arrow here is the usual route bouncing to the left of the bunker using some spin, definitely some right spin, maybe even some right curl as well. But you want the ball to go up to the back of the green, then catch the slope down to the right and fall down towards the pin. This hole was tweaked uh, fairly recently, so it's not been played in its current version that many times, I don't believe. And obviously this is going to be sniper for pro and expert as well. And master going to be using obviously driver. The red cross there just in front of the bunker. Uh, green side is a potential rough bump which people were playing I believe uh, in pro and expert with the quarterback uh, with a form of headwind if I'm not mistaken. So you do have some options there if you don't fancy the bounce round and you actually want to go aggressive then there is now a rough bump available on hole number two. Third hole now, first of the par fives, and these par fives in the Southern Pines, they are pretty long indeed. Two options here, left hand side, if we do get a um, horrendous amount of headwind, then we're gonna have to take the left hand route, bouncing over onto, um, onto that fairway pad there out to the left. Second shot, going to be needing a wood club with distance, bounce on that little island where the red cross is, and try and get as far down as you can. And pr provided we do get a decent way down, then you've got a short iron shot for the eagle going left-hand side. If we do get tailwind, then go full blast down that super wide fairway on the right. I love this one, it's almost impossible to drive the rough 
uh, even with full overpower on this. So just get a decent power ball out there and go full blast. Uh, big topper is good for rookies, extra mile with a top spin, obviously expert and master going for distance and ramp the top spin on as well. We want to get down there as far as we can towards the end of that fairway. 10% on the drive in both cases. Second shot on the white route on the right hand side. You can either go left or right side of the big bunker there before the green. I wouldn't recommend trying to bounce over it. Some people do, but it's very difficult to judge a second bounce wind effect. So either left or right, depending on the wind direction. And obviously if you go left side, you want to use curl and right spin and backspin to go in towards the green. And the opposite, if you're playing on the right side, you need to go in with left curl and left spin. It's a weird shaped green, this one. If you fall too short, you may roll into the bunker. And if you don't have enough backspin off um, on your shot here, you may obviously roll off the green into the rough at the back. So if we do have tailwind, we really do need to get an eagle here. Headwind, got to fight for it a little bit more on hole number three. Fourth hole, a par four. And again, it's on the long side here. So you are going to want a power two, power three ball minimum. Two routes here, depending on though, obviously what wind we do have. You can play aggressively over to the right hand side, that's the black line, 10% bouncing over there with top spin, with some right spin and maybe a little bit of right curl as well. That will set you up a very straight approach to the green without any hindrance of bunkers or rough, which would play 0%. You've got a decent chance of an eagle here to be honest. Left hand side, you're going to want to uh, put plenty of top spin, avoid the fairway bunker and get down as far as you can. After the drive on the left, the best chance for an eagle is of course going for the rough bump, but bear in mind that bunker right in front of the green, that large bunker there, does drop down massively downhill. So if you do have to adjust down into that bunker, you will need to compensate for the lack of elevation or the loss of elevation on your aim point. But that is the best chance there for an eagle. If you don't fancy the rough bump and you do have a club with backspin, you can obviously bounce on the fairway to the lower right of the green as we look with full backspin, left curl and left spin and just try to hold on the green. The final alternative which people do play rather than the rough bump but going directly at pin is to go with something like the satin and try and max backspin your way to an eagle there. However, I do believe the rough bump is the best opportunity and we may be able to get some yardage notes dialed in on this one. On to the fifth hole, this is another par three here. And again, on the longer side, we are going to be using a wood club here for rookie as well as pro and expert. Obviously, master can be using a driver. The best chance is the rough bump with the white arrow that's shown there, the blue cross bouncing there directly in the rough and rolling just onto the pin. It's a fairly short pin on this one. You haven't got far to go once you've hit the rough. Plus 10% is the general elevation here. If we don't get the wind to go for that, then the left hand side is also an option. And that's obviously bouncing there with some right spin and maybe some right curl to make sure that the wind is not going to push you back into the water. If you are playing left hand side, you want the ball to roll up to the back of the green, catch the slope and then roll back down towards the pin. This is one of the holes that has been redesigned recently. So that little island in the stream has now gone and people instead of using the right route are now forced to go center or left due to the designs to the slope and the changes made on the green. Hole number six, really interesting uh, par five in my opinion. We've got three routes to choose from here as well. You've got to pick which one suits you the best according to what clubs you've got and also what the wind is doing. The white route on the right is good if we get really strong tailwind. You can bounce directly on that second little piece of fairway Go with a load of top spin and some left spin, as well as some left curl. Try and get second bounce in the rough and propel yourself out with the top spin. Plus 10% on the drive. From there, assuming all goes well, you've got a short iron shot for the albatross, playing at plus 20. That is a really good aggressive route. Another slightly aggressive route is the middle one, which is the blue line. And even for rookies... Uh, without a maxed quarterback you can still do this shot and it's actually a power slice. There are some good aim points there. If you see uh, that little uh, area of trees absolutely smack bang in the centre of the overview. There is one that's kind of a pinky red colour which is useful 
as a reference and if you've got some practice tokens to spare I would get used to having a go at this put a couple of bars of top spin on and a couple of bars of right spin aim somewhere on those trees depending what the wind's doing and go for a full slice it will set you up hopefully with a great path towards those two patches of trees near the green uh, you've got a rough bump option here as well which is pretty good with the goliath if you've got the top spin and the ball guide if not obviously you can play standard backspin shot finally the less aggressive in terms of albatross chance is the black line playing out towards the left again 10 percent on the drive from there though assuming you don't roll too far into the bunker or the rough which is a possibility because that fairway does slope slightly downhill towards the end of that fairway bunker there you've got a uh, quite a distance to cover with your wood club so i would suggest going with the big dog or the cataclysm or even the horizon for the ball guide and the top spin play the second shot zero percent but you are going to need a fair amount of top spin and plenty of right curl seventh hole and once again we've got two options to choose from here so you have to choose which one you want to go with depending uh, what shots you fancy and also once again what the wind direction is doing left hand side on the white arrows bouncing over that mass of uh, bunkers there 10 percent get plenty of top spin on there and some right spin make sure you're clearing all those nasty sand traps if you're in those uh, bunkers or the rough probably not going to be reaching the green in two without using a substantial amount of overpower second shot there on the white arrows is going to be 10 percent extra as well and most likely going to be with the long iron so the grizzly is good if you've got that for the ball guide 10 percent extra drive 10 percent extra second shot the black line on the right really really interesting you can bounce over to that little island it does go uphill even though we play at 10 percent uh, ball guide is key here if you've got a good driver with ball guide get yourself in a very very good position up to the top of that larger fairway pad in the center of the diagram that will then leave you fairly downhill shot plus 30 is the general elevation here although we may need to tweak it as well depending on wind direction and that's going to be a rough bump and you've got a really good funnel here from as we look at it uh, look at it on the screen here the bottom right corner of the green on the overview it then slopes down uh, towards the pin so that's really good obviously in master division when we've had send it wind we have gone full blast bouncing onto the tip of that uh, larger fairway pad in the center where the tip of the black arrow is and clearing the lake and that will leave you a very very makeable even if it's a rough iron chip it's a really good chance for an eagle so master division any hint of a great tailwind here we're going to be going full blast for the green in one the last of the par threes now and once again we have three routes to choose from here uh, from the front tee i would usually be playing the white line it's plus 10 percent elevation for all routes really here as a general rule but the rookie is usually going to be bouncing before that bunker on the right play with a little bit of top spin and a bit of left spin and avoid the rough on the right and just bounce over the bunkers and the ball will roll nicely up to that corner of the green where the pin is you do have a little slope at the back so it's not uh, too disastrous if you're coming in slightly hot obviously you don't want to be coming in way hot because you will roll long but there is a little kind of slope at the back which will take your ball back in towards the pin the blue line here from the left side um, not a bad shout really for middle t that's obviously going in completely the other side with right spin and right curl if you've got loads of backspin available then the black line is very very interesting so we're thinking about thor's hammer you know six bars of backspin something like that or the rocket we've used as well um, especially from third t if you can bounce directly on the green there then that's going to be very very good as well however be careful if you are playing that shot you don't want to go too short here especially if you're dealing with some headwind make sure you've got a good adjustment here on hole number eight it is going to be tricky to get a hole in one here but if you do get one and especially as it's a nine hole cup it's going to be a massive bonus and finally on to the very very long hole nine another par five hopefully we have wind where we can go over the bunker either bouncing before it in which case make sure you leave some room in case the tailwind carries you too far on your first bounce put plenty of topspin on bounce over or if you've got the balls and the club for it go max op and clear the bunker directly either way you want to be getting over there 
with as much distance possible. Second shot, gonna be a 180 yard wood club, so big dog or cataclysm. And you want to be just getting near to the fringe really for an eagle chip. If you want to play aggressively, you can do, and that is bouncing on the fairway, second bounce in the rough, immediately preceding the green, and then with topspin, rolling out. It is a remote chance of an albatross here, but it is one we have been looking at uh, in recent times on this hole. If we get a stinker of a headwind, we are gonna have to play out to the left-hand side, and then still going with a 180 yard wood club. Obviously the eagle will be very, very difficult if we do have headwind on this hole as it's so long. Finally, it's not mentioned on the uh, overview here. However, we have aimed uh, for a power hook in master division, I do believe, um, out towards the right hand rough and then you just do play a hook shot and it bounces you over the bunker. So if the wind is uh, ideally placed for that, it can be a good alternative. You've got plenty of fairway to aim at. Either way, it's a tricky part five and it will require a lot of distance on your drive. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you did find the general walkthrough useful and I hope you're looking forward to the tournament as well. I will see you all very soon here on the channel. Bye for now. Bye bye.